Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland, bringing you my introduction to my newsletter for the 14th of June, 2019. Um, I'm, I'm kind of highlighting some stuff from the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland uh, in this particular newsletter. It's just that I've given you a link uh, if you want to watch some of their lectures because they're Pretty well all the lectures they're doing, including the Rhind elections, uh, lectures, are being uh, videoed and they're putting them on YouTube so you can get links to all of their lectures uh, from their website. And I'd certainly encourage you to join the organisation because if you like to do um, archaeology or history of Scotland and you're into that kind of thing, then it's a great organisation to be a member of and of course you, your annual subscription would help to uh, help the society to do all the great work that they do. Okay, so anyway, uh, so are the news stories for this week. It says, Forgotten Battle of Glen Shiel to be remembered. The Jacobite side was largely made up of the clan Mackenzie, along with um, Camerons and Macdonalds, as well as a group of MacGregors, whose numbers included Rob Roy MacGregor himself. So that's quite an interesting article from the BBC. Um, watchdog concerns over response to deaths in custody in Scotland. It says a watchdog has warned that delays in holding inquiries into deaths in police custody are having a profound impact on the families uh, affected. And to be perfectly honest with you, there's um, there really is no reason for there to be such a massive, massive long delay on this. Um, they've just got to get their act together. So we'll, 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 we'll see what transpires uh, with that one. Okay, so uh, next story I've got is really just is one to illustrate that while Britain's having problems... <laughs> Other European countries are having problems, and in this case it says Merkel's Conservatives hit a new low, piling pressure on the coalition. It says Germany uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel, Conservatives, slumped in a record low and fell further, battling the resurgent opposition Greens in a survey published on Saturday, reflecting growing disillusionment with the ruling coalition. You know, and, and I think if you want to stay in the EU, then you need to be aware of what the EU is doing or not doing. And quite frankly, pretty well every EU country has got their own problems and everything. So, you know. Okay, we don't owe the EU any money. That is the conclusion that Martin Howe, QC, Chairman of Lawyers for Britain, and Charles um, Elphix, MP, have come to after an exhaustive analysis. And I've given you a link so you can read the analysis for yourself. I've also actually popped it up on my um, Brexit page within my Electric Scotland site, just because it's part of the permanent history that I've been building on Brexit. Okay, then another story which piqued my interest was Australian nurses fill Scots shortages after NHS Grampy and recruitment drive. Says almost a hundred Australian nurses could be working in hospitals in the northeast of Scotland by the end of the year after a successful recruitment drive to tackle shortages. Now the next story is another interesting one. Inverness cyclist um, Jenny Graham, a new world record holder. Scottish endurance cyclist Jenny Graham 
has been named a Guinness World Record holder for uh, setting a new time for circumnavigating the globe on a bike. Pretty amazing. Next story is Peterborough was a watershed everyone can learn from. It says Peterborough was a watershed by election. First off, it returned Labour's first out of the box or out of the closet anti Semite MP this century, and that alone makes for grim reading. I wonder if the electors knew she was an anti Semite. We will have to see. Introducing Britain beyond Brexit. Says policies for post Brexit Britain should promote and expand enterprise ownership and prosperity. And then Global Britain, the great partnership. Britain has been responsible for plenty of positive change in the world. And next one, a healthier, wealthier nation. Britain should be leading the world in the cutting edge by embracing the potential of tomorrow. It's done. I'm having a wee bit problems reading my text because uh, I had spent three hours at the eye clinic today because it's a six monthly checkup I get and they put a whole load of drops in my eyes so I'm a wee bit blurry on reading. So apologies for that. A vision for a prosperous post-Brexit Britain. Brexit um, carries risks, all change does, but it will also bring enormous opportunities. This is a CapEx story, as was the last two, incidentally. Um, Jeremy Corbyn lambasted by Labour MPs in worst meeting as leader. MPs criticised Labour's handling of Brexit and complaints of harassment and anti-Semitism. Okay. The internet thrives without net neutrality. You know, it's a big debate about whether we should have net neutrality or not. But this one is, uh, again, is, is, is an interesting one. It was highlighted to me through CapEx though it's not a CapEx story. It says it's been a full year since the FCC repealed net neutrality. And how have the uh, predictions of doom and gloom held up? So if you want to read that story, you'll find out. Uh, okay. Um, next story is UK unemployment falls again to its lowest level since 1974 and pays up to despite Britain's Brexit paralysis. It's a Daily Mail article, that one. Oh yeah, I just came across this one of one of the many newsletters I get in about spam. It says stupid, pointless, annoying malware, question mark. Read more at malwarebytes slash spam. Change of view. One Scottish man's idea um, to fix the broken world of online debate. And that was a really interesting the article, that, and I hope you might want to have a read it and perhaps visit his site. A Highlander he is. Ayrshire Dairy is cream of the crop at BBC Award. An Ayrshire farm, once worked by Robert Burns, has won a top award at the BBC Food and Farming Awards. Then the last story, or the last news story anyway I've got for you, is um, about Boris Johnston. Uh, tops first Tory leadership ballot as three hopefuls uh, eliminated. One of which actually was one of the ones I'd uh, kind of highlighted to you last week or so was uh, Essa McVeigh, so she came bottom in the list. Maybe she was considered too young, I don't know. Anyway, you'll be able to get all the, the voting information there. 
Boris Johnson's well in the lead at this moment. Okay, then on to an actor Canadian, uh, the Canadian Horticulturalist, volume 30 for 1907 is up. Uh, I got volume 5 for the Wentworth Historical Society. Uh, so it's always a bit of an interesting read. There's always something in there that's interesting. Then we got the uh, OAC Review. I've added volume 1. And uh, I've also put a, a link to it in the magazine section of the site. And on the magazine section I've given you a link to about another 200 copies of it if you enjoy reading that one. It's a University of Guelph publication. Then I've got Sessional Papers. Um, it's the second session, 14th Legislative uh, Assembly of Manitoba, session 1915. So it's got some rather interesting information in there, so that's why I put that out. There's actually more copies of that on the Internet Archive as well. Uh, the city of Nelson, it's the metropolis of the far-famed mineral district of Kootenay. Um, so you can read a wee bit about, uh, about uh, the town there. Then, on to Electric Scotland. Uh, we've got another copy of Best Newfangled Family Tree in. Uh, and she's now starting to email with, with some comments. So I've given you the comments she added to the email that I got in with it. So I hope you might enjoy that. Um, here is the... Oh yeah, and she mentions in there about a video about the Battle of Culloden. Um, now I clicked on the link and it didn't work, but I have found the video that she was talking about and I put it up in her, um, on our site. So I've given you a link to the page where I put it basically, which is about the Battle of Culloden naturally, but if you scroll down towards the bottom of the page, I've embedded the video there so you can have a read, read of that. Basically they're trying to sell part of the battlefield to developers to put houses on. Absolutely disgusting. Nicola Sturgeon's all for it. Of course she is. She doesn't care about Scottish people or, or the Scots at all. Just cares about her own personal view on things. But I think it's disgusting. And the Scottish government's approved it. I would tell you this much. I think anyone that buys a house on that should be shot. Or certainly the windows should be broken constantly until they leave. And then we flatten the blinking things. But, you know, it's just disgusting. That's a massive um, battlefield that needs to be preserved for, for generations to come. So, there you go. SMP couldn't give a damn about Scottish history and one of the most important battles that ever happened on Scottish soil. No, SMP don't give a damn. And I don't give a damn about the SMP. The sooner they go, the better Scotland's going to be. That's for sure. Anyway, you can watch it yourself and see what you think. I think it's baller. Okay, the next story is uh, Memorials of Peter Smith. Now, remember last week I gave you the story and took some pages from it? Well, I, and I promised you I would give you the whole book to read? Well, I've now got the whole book up on the site, so you'll be able to read that. If, so if you enjoyed the story, you'll no doubt want to click on that link to read the rest of it. Um, oh, I've, yes, Fulbrook Farm Heritage Site. Um, it's actually a, a Canadian site there. The reason I've got it under Electric Scotland is that um, when I first met Sandy Mackay, who's organising and behind the whole thing, um, he was wanting to get in touch with Scots at home that might have... have um, connections so it's actually up on electric scotland so um as i've he, he gave me a whole pile i think about at least 12 cds which had a combination of videos and audio recordings of the um, people living in the area that remember the old days and what i've done in this this past week is that there were three of these CDs were actually audio recordings 
and I've now got all of those up on the on the site. So I've now got all the 12 CDs up that Sandy gave me. So if you like listening to the old folk talking about the old days, hopefully you'll enjoy listening to that. And I came across the tripping of the colour. Don't watch it every year, I must confess, but I thought, well, you know, I haven't watched it for a bit, and I thought I would uh, put up the, 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 the last, well, the 1919 one. So I put it up in our community, so if you want to watch that there, it's about two hours or so, but the commentary is really good. I mean, the BBC does these kind of things really, really well, I will say. Okay, then a few words anent the red pamphlet. By one who has served under the Marquis of Dalhousie, the red pamphlet entitled The Military of the Bengal Army by one who has served under Sir Charles Napier is so full of gross misrepresentations that one who has served under Lord Dalhousie feels constrained in to contradict some of um, some of them and to ask for the public to distrust more. This was done in 1858. Uh, certainly, uh, I've actually popped it up because I've got a page for India, Scots in India, uh, which is getting quite big now because I keep finding interesting stuff to put up in that section. So um, that's where I've put it for you to read. Uh, next one is the withdrawal of the UK from the European Union. It says analysis by Charles um, Elphix MP and Martin Howe QC of uh, potential financial liabilities and of the jurisdiction to enforce them. So again, I, I popped uh, that, that's uh, an article I took, a, a PDF file which I wanted to keep for the historical history for Brexit. So it's up in Electric Scotland. Uh, if you wish to read that, you can. And then um, this one is Memoirs of the Caledonian Horticultural Society. It's in four volumes, quite a meaty, and lots of great articles in it, I will say. Um, I've given you some descriptive uh, information about it and also a link to where you can read the, 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 the full volume. And then, Memorials of the Alderman, Provosts and Lord Provosts of Aberdeen from 1272 to 1895. It's by Alexander M. Munro, who's an FSA Scot, and he produced it in 1897. So, then Northern Scotland, this is uh, the journal of the Centre for Scottish Studies at the University of Aberdeen. It was edited by David uh, Stevenson in 1990. So when I found that, I thought, oh, must put that out. Then the final story is The Last Battle, The Threat to Culloden. And um, that's where I've given you a, a specific link to the thing I mentioned under best newfangled family tree so it's a half hour film so you can uh, hopefully enjoy watching that and then the story this week is history of the scottish regiments in the british army it's by arthur archibald k murray it was produced in 1862 what i've done is i've given you the preface and the introduction uh, to the book which is quite a good reading itself. And then I've given you a link to the text file where you can read the whole book if you wish. Okay, and so that's it uh, for this week. Hope you enjoy some of the stuff that's up there. And as always, feel free to send me a comment. And, or, and I remember, you know, the more I hear from you, the better. I like hearing from you all. If you're enjoying something, let me know. If you're not enjoying something, let me know. If there's something you'd like to learn that isn't available on my site, let me know and I can maybe find it. And if you're aware of history of your local area or town or village or whatever, and I don't have it up on the sites, let me know where I can get a copy and I'm happy to put it up. So, you know, get involved. The more you get involved, the better. Okay, thanks very much. 
and have a good weekend when it comes.